Buenas tardes muchachos, como están ustedes? Glad you're back for another video. Gratitude is our only attitude always. You could have been on YouTube watching anything. You could have been watching why you should never be rude until you get your food when you go to a restaurant. Do something. Do something. Have been watching a guy quit his job like a true boss. Guys, what is this? Guys, all of you out right now. Jared, I'm here to tell you that I'm quitting. Either way, you're right back here with me and for that I'm grateful. Today I'm going to show you a way of creating passive income with 12 stocks so you get paid every single week of the year without fail for as long as you hold the stocks and an extra bonus stock also. So stay tuned, let's roll the credits and yeah, let's get to it. Bienvenidos de nuevo, amigos y familia. ¿Cómo están ustedes? Hope you're all doing all right. If you're anything like me, getting paid 12 times a year monthly from work is just not enough. So I have bought into companies where I am now going to get paid 52 times a year. That sounds a lot more like it. Um, if dividend investing is something you're interested in, then this is the video for you. I'm going to show you 12 companies you need to invest in, which will give you four payments every month for as long as you own the shares a lot of research and time has gone into this video so all i ask is that you please like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and join us on this journey right first stock out of the 12 we're going to look at today oh before we go any further the money hat needs to come on that's how you're nice serious right the first stock we're looking at today is altria stock ticker mo they have a market cap of 88.01 billion, so they fall under the large market cap, and they have an excellent dividend yield of 7.23%. Right, Altria is huge in the tobacco business. Um, they own cigarette companies like Marlboro, Black and Mild, all these brands here. If you're a smoker, I'm sure you know them. Altria Group holds diversified positions across tobacco, alcohol and cannabis through our wholly owned subsidiaries and strategic investments in other companies. We seek to provide category leading choices to adult consumers while returning maximum value to shareholders through dividends and growth. Altria are really trying to step away from tobacco. Uh, they're really pushing this phrase moving beyond smoking where um, they're really getting into a lot of vaping products and they've got some vaping companies under their belt also. Altria also has a 10% stake in, I can never say this right, and Husa Bush in Bev. Um, our 10% ownership of AB and Bev, now the largest global brewer, provides us with substantial income, cash flow, and a strong asset on our balance sheet. And uh, AB and Bev, they make a lot of beers that I'm sure you're familiar with, Bex, Budweiser, Corona, they do quite a lot. Also, when it comes to vaping, in 2018, Altria announced that it signed and closed a 12.8 billion investment in Juul Labs, the US leader in e-vapor to accelerate harm reduction and drive growth. Altria's investment represents a 35% economic interest in Juul and Juul will remain fully independent. I really didn't think smoking was an innovative business, but clearly it is. They've also gone into cannabis. In 2019, Altria acquired a 45% equity stake in Kronos Group, a leading global cannabinoid company headquartered in Toronto, Canada. 
This investment positions Altria to participate in the emerging global cannabis sector, which we believe is poised for rapid growth over the next decade. It also creates a new growth opportunity in a category that is adjacent and complementary to our core tobacco businesses. Altria have also gone into wine with Stem Michel. Um, it's a collection of distinctive estate wineries whose vineyards produce some of the best wines in the world. So as you can see, Altria is very diverse. They've got a lot going on from the standard tobacco, cigarettes and whatnot. They're stepping, or I shouldn't say stepping away, they're still going to own them brands, but they're also providing alternatives with the vaping, they're into cannabis, they're into wine, they're into alcohol. So they're going to be able to provide these dividends for many years, I believe. Also, they're actually dividend kings. To be a dividend aristocrat, you have to consecutive, consecutively raise your dividends for at least 25 years. To be a dividend king, you have to raise your dividend for 50 years. Altria are currently at 51. So, um, yeah, I am very confident having my money in there and not really worried about it. So that's why for me personally, Altria makes the list. Right, next on my list, it's not the second one, it's actually an alternative to Altria because I do understand that for many people, they don't want to be involved in tobacco companies or any kind of vice stocks, whether it's alcohol, gambling, smoking. I understand that. So I've provided an alternative. And this one I like very much, um, Starwood Property Trust, stock ticker STWD. They have a mid-market cap of 7.378 billion and have an impressive dividend yield of 7.47%, which is high, but they are a REIT. And as you know, REITs do have higher dividend yields. Right, Starwood Property Trust is the largest commercial mortgage real estate investment trust in the United States. They have a portfolio of over 17 billion across the company's commercial and residential lending, infrastructure, lending, investing and servicing and property business segments. Plus, what's music to my ears is they have a focus on providing a secure dividend for investors. Starwood Property Trust is a leading diversified finance company with a core focus on the real estate and infrastructure sectors, an affiliate of global private investment firm Starwood Capital Group. The company has successfully deployed over 69 billion of capital since inception and manages a portfolio of over 18 billion across debt and equity investments. Starwood Property Trust Investments' objective is to generate attractive and stable returns for shareholders, primarily through dividends, by leveraging a premier global organization to identify and execute on the best risk-adjusted returning investments across its target assets. Right, second on my list is a favorite, Iron Mountain, stock ticker IRM. They have a mid-market cap of 12.768 billion and they have a dividend yield of 5.59%, which is very high. Iron Mountain Incorporated is the global leader in innovative storage and information management services, storing and protecting billions of valued assets, including critical business information, highly sensitive data, and cultural and historical artifacts. Founded in 1951 and trusted by more than 225,000 customers worldwide, Iron Mountain helps climb higher to transform their businesses. Through a range of services, including digital transformation, data centers, secure record storage, information management, secure destruction, and art storage and logistics, Iron Mountain helps businesses bring light to their dark data, enabling customers to unlock value and intelligence from their stored digital and physical assets at speed with security while helping them meet their environmental goals. Now, what I love about Iron Mountain, not only is it a very good dividend payer, but I've got some awesome growth out of this stock this last year. 60.22% has gone up. Um, with my dividend stocks, these are stocks I've, I've planned to hold for, for the foreseeable. I don't really have a, a time when I plan to sell them. But if this stock continues with this growth, I may not have no um, choice but to sell and take some of that profit because that profit is just sitting there nicely. But either way, right now, I don't want to sell unless there's something really worth pivoting into. But yeah, Iron Mountain, personal favorite. Third on the list is Verizon Communications. 
Um, they have a mega, a mega market cap of 233.5 billion and have a dividend yield of 4.46%. Right, we all know Verizon, huge giant in telecommunications. Verizon Communications was formed on June 30th, 2000 and is one of the world's leading providers of technology, communications, information and entertainment products and services. Headquartered in New York City and with a presence around the world, Verizon generates revenues of 128.3 billion in 2020. The company offers voice data and video services and solutions on its award-winning networks and platforms, delivering on customers' demand for mobility, reliable network connectivity, security, and control. Verizon was the first company in the world to launch a 5G commercial mobile network with a commercially available 5G-enabled smartphone. The company's operating structure focuses on three customer-facing areas, consumer, business, and media. For me, Verizon should be one of the solid pillars within your port within your dividend portfolio. Um, they're not going nowhere. Been around for many years. They're growing their dividend. I'm not sure. Do you know? I think they are a dividend king. I mean, uh, aristocrat. I'm not sure if they're a king. Um, I don't want to say it and they're not. So if you know, let me know in the comments. But um, they're very stable. Good dividend payer and huge in 5g very in, um, innovative so yeah i believe money is safe in verizon All right fourth on the list is actually one on the london stock exchange and that is glaxo smith's client stock ticker gsk they have a large market cap of 800.256 billion and their dividend yield is 5.37 percent I actually really like Glaxo. Um, there's not many stocks on the London Stock Exchange when it comes to dividends that pay out quarterly. Most of them are biannually. And Glaxo is a quarterly dividend payer. GSK are a science-led global healthcare company with a special purpose to improve the quality of human life by helping people do more, feel better, and live longer. It turned over 34 billion in 2020 alone. Right, their three main sectors are pharmaceuticals, vaccines, and consumer healthcare. Under pharmaceuticals, their key products are Trelogy for asthma, Nucala for severe asthma, and Triomec, and Tivike for HIV. For vaccines, their key products are Shingrix for shingles, Infenrix for pediatrics, and Bexero for meningitis. Consumer healthcare, their key products are Sensodyne, uh, toothpaste, which I use, Voltaren for pain relief, and Panadol for pain relief. They actually have so many other products, which I didn't know GSK was behind, such as Polydent, Biotin, Aquafresh, and Centrum, an emergency. And as you can see from this drop down list here, um, all the products which they own, even Chapstick. I didn't know Chapstick was, uh, you know, from GSK. But a lot of these things you'll find in the pharmacy and over the counter and whatnot. So, yeah. Plus, here in the UK, they're considered one of the best dividend paying companies. Um, like I said, they pay quarterly, got a high dividend yield, which they've been paying no problem. So, that's why they made this list. But what you'll find with GlaxoSmith's client is they're good if you're there for the dividend, not necessarily if you want growth, um, you know, share price appreciation. So that's why I'm gonna provide an alternative for this. Which takes me to the next stock that I wanna show you, which is Joint Fourth with GlaxoSmithKline. Um, for me, I'd have one or the other. I do actually have both for full transparency and that's because Walmart for me falls under a different portfolio, which I've had, which if you've watched my old videos, you'd know anywhere that I go regular, I buy shares in and I go shopping at Asda, which was Walmart at one point. I think Walmart's still on 20% of Asda, but um, point is I go there once a week. So every week I go up by 0.1% of a share and I'll just do that continuously. So I do actually own Walmart um, and GSK, but for the sake of this portfolio, I'd say choose one or the other. Um, GSK, you're gonna get a nice dividend um, itself, but not so much growth. Where the opposite with Walmart, the dividend yield is very low, but you're gonna get a lot of share price appreciation. So something to think about. Anyway, Walmart has a mega market cap of 398 billion. 
And like I said, they have a small dividend yield of 1.55%. But the real good thing about Walmart as well is they're only three years away from becoming a dividend king. They've currently got 47 years of raising their dividends, which means they're currently a dividend aristocrat. But as soon as they hit that 50, they will become a dividend king. I don't really feel there's a need to cover Walmart. We all know Walmart and Asda, they're huge, huge supermarkets. And also they've really grown in the e-commerce space. They're rivaling Amazon with certain things. Um, their home delivery network is just constantly growing. So yeah, we all know Walmart, but point is they've been around for many years. Um, their dividend's low, but it's getting higher. They're continuously making it higher. And um, yeah, they're not going nowhere, let's face it. So like I said before, for the sake of this portfolio, I'd say choose one. It depends which type of investor you are, whether the yield is of super importance to you. Um, just thinking about the here and now, which is there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I do that with some of my stocks. Or you're thinking about what the dividend yield is going to be like in a few years. And knowing that it's a dividend aristocrat looking to be a king, you know it's going to it's going to grow, and there's going to be some share price appreciation. So it depends which is of more importance to you. But that's why I gave you the option, uh, one or the other. Right next on the list, fifth place is one of my favourites in the healthcare sector, and that is Abvi. They have a mega market cap of two hundred and five billion, and they have a current dividend yield of four point four three percent which no doubt will be going up because Abvi, if I'm not, yeah, if I'm right, they have 49 years of raising their dividend. So they're just one year away of being a dividend king. So I don't think they're going to slip up now and, and lower the dividend. It would make no sense. So Abvi are definitely one of my favorite stocks in the healthcare sector. But Abvi are a company that takes on the toughest health challenges. They do more than treat diseases. They aim to make remarkable impact on people's lives. They are a highly focused, research-driven biopharmaceutical company. Our 48,000 employees are scientists, researchers, communicators, manufacturing specialists, and regulatory experts located around the globe. We come up with new approaches to addressing today's health issues from life-threatening illnesses to chronic conditions. We target specific difficult to cure diseases where we can leverage our core R&D expertise to advance science. We're constantly working to create solutions that go beyond treating the illness to have a positive impact on patients' lives, on societies, and on science itself. Like I've said in, in many videos before, I like companies that are trying to solve problems, um, you know, including the pharmaceutical side, it's, it's, it's all needed. So yeah, um, this is my play in the healthcare sector. Right, six on the list is the City of London Investment Trust. They have a small market cap of 1.772 billion and they have a dividend yield of 4.80%. This is another one trading on the London Stock Exchange. And also with this stock, you do get some good growth on top of that dividend yield. I'll put a trust into this portfolio I'm building because I like some diversification as well and it's just good to have a trust in there um, so you don't have to buy all the stocks that's in the trust individually you can just group them all together and, and benefit so if we look at the top holdings of this um, this trust British American Tobacco uh, the most heavily weighted one and they're one of the best uh, dividend payers here in the UK. So it's good to see that they're actually at the top, uh, followed by Diageo, Rio Tinto, which I'm also in. I think they're a brilliant dividend payer, along with Unilever. M&G, Relix, uh, Royal Dutch Shell, Phoenix Group, BAE Systems, I also own that, and HSBC. The company's objective is to provide long-term growth in income and capital, principally by investment in equities listed on the London Stock Exchange. The board continues to recognize the importance of dividend income to shareholders. Like I just said, I want this portfolio to be well diverse. So I've got some shares that's more about growth, some that's about the dividend yield itself, some because they're dividend kings, um, others, like this one, they're on the London Stock Exchange, just so everything's not, not over in America. I've tried to make this as varied as possible. So please like this video, because a lot of effort has gone into it, you know, um, 
trying to make this portfolio as diverse as possible. So, you know, a thumbs up would be much appreciated. Right, the next stock staying on the London Stock Exchange is Greencoat UK Wind, stock ticker UKW. And they have a mid market cap of 2.657 billion. And they have, although well, it's not showing here on Yahoo, a dividend yield of 5.60%. Greenco offers exposure to UK wind generation through a premium listed vehicle. Greenco UK Wind is invested solely in operation onshore and offshore UK wind farms, which are currently producing income. Greenco UK Wind was the first renewable infrastructure fund to list on the London Stock Exchange main market and is the only infrastructure fund or renewable infrastructure fund domiciled in the UK. I like Greenco and other companies who, who offer the same services for this reason. And that is, I strongly believe that after, you know, um, this pandemic has passed, the next focus is definitely going to be climate change and anything in the green energy sector is going to boom. So I believe it's about planting them seeds and getting in from now. Staying on the London Stock Exchange, the next stock we're looking at is the Blue Sol Bluefield Solar Income Fund. They have an impressive dividend yield of 6.64% and a small mar market cap of 486 million. Bluefield Solar Income Fund is an investment company focused on the acquisition and long-term management of a diversified portfolio of low carbon assets in the UK. Last year, the portfolio saved over 125,500 tonnes of CO2 emissions. They also state that to date, the company is the highest performing fund of its kind and has delivered the highest dividend in the sector every full financial year since IPO. There are over 100 assets under operation, typically large agriculturally situated solar farms with a small number by energy capacity of industrial and commercial sites. In July 2020, the company's shareholders voted to broaden the investment mandate into complementary renewable technologies such as onshore, wind, hydro and storage. Pretty good stuff. And you can see here where everything is scattered over the country. So it's pretty heavy in the south. So we look up north, like there's only a, only one. But um, yeah, Midlands to south, uh, Wales. Yeah, they're doing good things. Right, and ninth on the list is no other than the giant international business machines, also known as IBM. They have an impressive dividend yield of 4.69% and have a large market cap of 124 billion. Right, for as long as I've known computers, I've known the name IBM and you would have seen their name splashed all over Wimbledon if you watch it. Um, on top of that, they also offer loads of products and services. Right, you can see they're into artificial intelligence, automation, blockchain, cloud computing, data and analytics. The list goes on. Security, there, there's loads that they do now. They they really have been innovative over these last few years. I feel they, they kind of went stagnant for a while, but now they're, they're really on the ball. Right, in my eyes, IBM have done really well in um, updating their business model going forward. They have um, gone heavy into blockchain technology and cloud computing. So that on top of their excellent dividend is the reason that they are in this portfolio. Right, back in the clean energy space and on a London Stock Exchange, we have the Renewables Infrastructure Group who has a small market cap of 2.68 billion and they pay a very healthy dividend yield of 5.31%. I understand you may be thinking, well, I've already shown you uh, Green Coat and Bluefield Solar. So why, why this one now? But where Bluefield mainly offers uh, solar panels and Green Coat offers the wind farms, this company here actually offers both. Plus they all have different market caps. Um, so I understand three of the 12 are in the same field, but I, I strongly believe that, you know, um, when this climate change push comes about, these companies are gonna benefit massively. And I'm about getting in while the stock price is what it is because they are cheap as chips at the moment. So it makes sense to get in now. Plus the healthy dividend yield they pay, why not? Trig's diversified portfolio includes onshore and offshore wind farms and solar parks in the UK and Europe. 
These assets generate revenues from the sale of electricity and government-backed green benefits. The company aims to provide investors with long-term stable dividends and to retain the portfolio's capital, capital through reinvestment of surplus cash flows. Trig's diversified portfolio includes onshore and offshore wind farms and solar parks in the UK and Europe. These assets generate revenues from the sale of electricity and government-backed green benefits. The company aims to provide investors with long-term, stable dividends and to retain the portfolio's capital through reinvestment of surplus cash flows after payment of dividends. And as you can see from the map here, um, this company, uh, the Renewable Infrastructure Group, has actually branched out into Europe, where I do believe, I could be wrong, I'm going to go and double check, but I believe uh green co and bluefield solar income fund are based in the uk right 11th on the list is wall green boots alliance stock ticker wba they have a large market cap of 40 billion and they have a dividend yield of 3.99 which has been dropping a little bit but that's because the share price has been going up um, the share price goes up the dividend yields goes down and vice versa walgreens has had some excellent growth this year um, for obvious reasons they are starting to drop off a bit but i believe that's only going to ramp back upwards again especially you know once they bring up the next quarter's earnings walgreens boots alliance is a global leader in retail pharmacy anchored by iconic brands walgreens in the us and boots in europe and asia the company is meeting customer needs through our convenient retail locations digital platforms and health and beauty products while evolving the future of healthcare delivery by implementing innovative offerings to our customers and patients well right we all know boots in the uk so um that's who they are here but out in the in the us they have walgreens and currently with you know the pandemic what's going on you're able to go to walgreens for your for your jabs now you know how it is when you say to yourself you're only going in somewhere for one product but you end up walking out with a bag full of other stuff you didn't even realize you needed until you saw it when you walk past it. So um, as you can imagine, their revenue has just gone up and it's just gonna continue to go up with the um, extra amount of foot traffic that they're getting now. So Walgreens is an excellent stock to have. And on paper, um, go into Yahoo Finance and go through their balance sheets, you will see how much of a good company they are. So um, I'm actually staying in Walgreens until it hits about I honestly reckon it will hit somewhere between 70 and 80 dollars um maybe at 75 that would be a lot of profit i would have made i don't know if i'll sell it and reinvest elsewhere um because that is a lot to sit on in my dividend portfolio i'm mainly here for the dividends not so much the share price appreciation but our goals are all different so um but anyway going off subject there Walgreens is a is a very very healthy dividend stock to own especially during these current times right last on the list and definitely not least and that is 3m there's no way you could build a dividend portfolio and not have 3m on it that would just be rude and bad manners but yes 3m it has a large market cap of 116 million sorry billion and it has a dividend yield which is lower than the rest um i think only walmart on my list is lower but as a dividend yield of 2.92 percent that's not only is 3m a dividend aristocrat it's a dividend king which means it's been raising its dividend for over 50 years and not only has it just gone over 50 years it's done that consistently for 62 years so you've got to give them respect where it's due when I tell you 3M make everything, they literally make everything um, from post-its to woolly hats to, well, at work, the trucks I drive, um, the reflective skirting that goes around the sides. I look on the, I, I just happened to look on it the other day. What did I see? 3M. You, you literally will be surprised at how many things 3M make. Yeah, I literally wouldn't even have the time to sit here and reel off all the products that 3M do, but um, you can just look here and see how much things they're into. 8,316 products. Even when you just look here under the industries, um, you know, 
how much things they 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 do it's ridiculous but yeah do that for yourself have a have a look and see how much products three on makes and i bet you'd be surprised that you you know you know a few of them 3m are a science-based technology company that is committed to improving lives and doing business in the right way which is why we have been listed as a world's most ethical company for eight years in succession at 3M, we use science to improve lives and help solve the world's toughest challenges. We remain focused on executing our plans and continuing to deliver exceptional value for our customers and premium returns for our shareholders. Really and truly, 3M has to be one of those foundation pillars in your portfolio. They've been raising their dividend for 62 years. You know, in 62 years, we've been through recessions, um, you know, virus outbreaks all kind of nonsense and they've managed to continuously raise their dividend for 62 years throughout they've been throughout all of this so you can't go wrong with 3m no their dividend yields not the biggest but it grows every year plus they're going to be here for the long haul it's it's, it's one of those ones that it's just going to be there bubbling in the background that you need one of the, the backbones of your portfolio so yeah, free m is definitely in mine. Right, so that is actually all 12 dividend stocks that I wanted to show you um, how you're gonna generate 52 paychecks every month from these companies. But this one here is a bonus. And after I'm gonna show you how they all fit together and how it's all gonna work, so stay tuned. But the next uh, bonus stock I wanna show you is AG&C. They're, they are a REITs. Um, they have a mid-market cap of $8.48 billion, And right now, they have a very handsome dividend of 8.93%. All right, agency. Our principal investment objective is to provide our stockholders with attractive risk-adjusted returns through a combination of monthly dividends and net asset value accretion. That's what we're here for with this bonus stock, AGNC. We want the monthly dividend. And... Um, I like AGNC. I've had my money invested in them for near enough as long as I've been in the market. The share, how much they've been paying out each month has dipped a little bit, but they have said that's, you know, what they was expecting to happen due to the situation we're going through, you know, the Ronies. But um, they have put that back up. My last payment from them had gone up a few cents. So I'm hoping they're back on track now. But the reason I put this monthly paying dividend stock in there is because there's going to be months where you may be expecting a payment from say 3M where your dividend isn't going to be that much. So you want a monthly one in there to help boost up your earnings that month. And throughout for, for the monthly REITs, which I've looked at and been invested in, AGNC has been my favorite. Right, now this is where everything's gonna start making sense. And first of all, if you are still here with me from the start of this video, I'm very grateful. So um, yeah, now you can see where it all fits together. If you just look between January and March, you will see that that is all the 12 companies and they all pay quarterly. So then basically it's just repeated throughout the year. So you can see whether you, for January, whether you invest in Altria or Starwood, and then Iron Mountain, Verizon, and then if you chose between Walmart and GSK, you're gonna get that again in April, July, and October. And you can see that for all stocks. And then, as I said before, I put AGNC um, onto the list because that's a monthly paying dividend stock. And whatever you're lacking in a particular month, as long as you've got some A, G, and C as well, it's going to help top up your earnings. So my personal aim, this is just what I do. And remember, I'm not a financial advisor. And more importantly, I'm not your financial advisor. So always do your own due diligence. But my aim with any dividend stock which I buy is to own at least um, 10 pounds worth when it comes to payments. So each payment, I know I'm getting at least 10 pounds. So you can see from the maths here, every month from these stocks, I'm aiming to get 50 pounds, including agency. Um, and that's, that's for me and my budget. We all earn different amounts. You may earn a lot more than I do. You may say 50 pound ain't enough. You may wanna aim for 100, 
500, whatever the case may be. But bottom line is the purpose of this video, I am not advertising these stocks for you to buy. Like I said, I'm not a financial advisor. This is just a method I found which works for me and I wanted to share it with you guys. But they do say you shouldn't pick a dividend stock for the frequency of the payout or when it pays out. But if you pick good companies and work out when they pay, you can make a chart like this, um, which will serve you greatly. I've, I've found this works for me. You could try it yourself, see if it works for you. You may want to take out certain stocks. Like I said, you may look at Altria and say, I don't want to be involved in a cigarette company. You may look at GlaxoSmithKline and say, I don't want to be involved in a farmer. It's all up to you. Um, swap them out with which other companies you're interested in. Um, if you like the companies I've picked, let me know in the comments. Same time, if you don't like the ones I've picked, let me know in the comments. Um, but basically, I think you should build a chart for yourself and yeah, see how much you could potentially be earning. This worked for me. Um, see what works for you. But as you could imagine with this video, it took quite a bit of research for me to do. So please, all I ask is that you give me a like on this video. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Like I said, if you don't like certain stocks or you do like, let me know. And if you haven't subscribed already, then hit that subscribe button. Join us. You know, we're a family over here trying to build a little community. If you know, if you've got friends that are interested in the stock market or dividends and share it with them and, and, and get their opinions. So again, yeah, please hit that like button. Otherwise, I'm going to have no choice but to get my friends Croy and Anton and hit the streets of Camden and start busking again. <laughs> and trust me, no one don't want to see that. But yeah, if you're still with me from the beginning of this video, I'm, I'm super grateful. You know, gratitude is our only attitude over here. Thank you very much. I should be back hopefully in a week with another video. So yeah, stay tuned. Hasta la semana próxima. Adios.